Thank you, Cindy. Can everybody hear me okay? All right. Well, thanks again. I definitely understand I'm between you and lunch, so I'll try to keep it <laughs> to the point. But I do have some good information I'd like to share with you guys. Um, like Cindy said, I'm the new district conservationist for the Gettysburg NRCS Fuel Office. I've been here four months. Um, I've been with the NRCS for a little over 12 years. Um, I came here from Northeast Colorado, where I was a range specialist for a little over nine years. Um, in terms of NRCS programs, how many of you, could I get a raise of hands, um, have had in some time, some way, shape, or form, interacted or participated in an NRCS program? All right, quite a few. Uh, that's good. Um, my goal today isn't necessarily to make you all experts in NRCS programs, but more or less to give you an overview of some of the common programs that we have, hopefully help you to get the best utilization out of the program so they can do the most for you. Um, with that said, um, in regards to uh, today's topic, I'm gonna highlight uh, four of our uh, more common NRCS programs. Now this isn't every program that we have and everything that we deal with. Um, some of those that might be excluded will involve easement programs, um, some of the innovative grants and those types of things. But in terms of soil health, in terms of grazing, in terms of applying what you're hearing today, uh, these are some really sound programs that can, I believe can help you uh, get uh, your goals, your objectives on the ground to head in the right direction. Okay. Uh, the first program I'm going to talk about today is called the Conservation Technical Assistance Program, or CTA. The second one is called the Enver Environmental Quality Incentive Program, EQIP. The third is Conservation Stewardship Program, CSP. And the last one I'm excited to tell you more about today is the Regional Conservation Partnership Program, which is a little bit newer to NRCS. Okay. CTA, or the Conservation Technical Assistance Program, um, as you can read on the slide, this is where the NRCS and its partners uh, provide their technical assistance to land owners to address opportunities, concerns, problems related to natural resources. This is really what I call the, the building blocks to a lot, of our a lot of our farm bill programs, a lot of the work that we do. This is how we start most of those programs. This is where we interact. We sit down with you, the producer, and find out what are your concerns? What are your objectives? Um, how we can help you the most, okay? This is one of the, uh, those programs. I really don't want to skip ahead because sometimes through the CTA and the technical assistance process is where we best identify maybe EQIP is the route to go, maybe CSP, maybe something else, or maybe none of the above. Um, we First, what this looks like um, in terms of CTA takes many forms. This can be as simple as a phone call to the office saying, Hey, Mr. NRCS guy, I want to plant a tree out here. What should I plant? I'm looking for a good grass mix. How do I improve my soil health? Um, this can be really brief. I'll walk in the door. Other things uh, this can look like sit down, sitting down in the office, walking through your complete ranch operation or farm operation, just really grasping hold of what, what is the management that we have on the land and how um, we can best address it. Um, it's, again, it's not something I want to skip steps. And a lot of this process starts on the land. You know, can't necessarily all be done on the ground. I want to encourage you guys, uh, this process as well, be honest, communicate with your planners, talk to the NRCS, tell us about your good experiences, what are the bad experiences, what have you tried, this has worked for me, this hasn't worked for me, um, and just helping us to be able to best realize, best identify your, your goals and your objectives. Okay, um, as the NRCS, um, believe it or not, we may not have every answer that you have to every question that you have, but as you've heard in the room already, um, you've heard guys like Stan Boltz, um, as well as you'll hear Jerry, um, Jason Miller this afternoon. Um, we've got a lot of experience and we visit with a lot of different projects in a lot of different country. Um, as an NRCS, as an agency, we have over 80 years of experience that we bring to the table. This is something that we're excited to share with, with everyone. Um, 
some of the benefits for this program, we've got, as you can see up above, um, maintaining and improving your private lands. Oops. There we go. Um, we've got implementing better land management technologies. So again, if there's another way, something that we can adapt or bring into your operation that's going to make your management just a little bit better, a little bit easier. Uh, we've got maintaining, uh, protecting and improving your water quality and quantity, maintaining and improving wildlife fish habitat, enhancing your recreation opportunities, um, maintaining and improving aesthetic character of the private land, believe it or not, exploring opportunities to diversify your egg operations, and develop and apply sustainable egg systems. So as you can see, the CTA program takes many shapes, many forms, um, and it, we use all of this to apply toward private land management. So these are non-federal non lands uh, that we're addressing here. Okay. The second program I want to talk about with you guys is called the EQIP, or the Environmental Quality Incentive Program. This program really works good to follow CTA because it really addresses both our financial assistance and technical assistance um, for getting projects done on the ground. Uh, just like all of our programs, um, we're looking to, address, to identify and address your soil, your water, your plants, animals, um, air, all of these resources. We go through the same planning process to help identify these up front in order to best identify how might we best address these alternatives. Ultimately, uh, when we go through the planning process, it doesn't have to be every goal, every objective that we enter into this program. You know, we can pick and choose. Our goal is to find the best program, the best tool to do the job and get accomplished our goals and objectives. Okay. There's a few things I want you to know about the EQIP program. Um, just in order to best utilize it and apply it to your land. Uh, first, we have operators and landowners are both eligible for this program. So not all of our programs are that way. Um, the program will require following a conservation plan. Again, it's an important step that we don't want to skip over, making sure that we've you know, had that discussion with you, we've met on the ground, we've identified what are your concerns, we've discussed alternatives, how we might best address those concerns. Um, as well as putting this, this plan into place. Um, okay. There's an old saying out there that says, you're either planning to fail or you're failing to plan. <laughs> um, this really goes hand in hand. Uh, contracts may be single year or multi-year contracts. Payment rates are set for each practice. They do change every year. Practices selected may be structural, vegetative, or management. I think this is really important because even the best practice out in the field without or absent from the management may not accomplish the same objective that you had in mind. Um, so it's really important that whatever, whatever we're doing on the ground, whether it be grassland, cropland, uh, we're including that management practice. Um, and the last thing with the Environmental Quality Incentive Program is it is competitive. There's a screening and ranking process that goes with every application that we work with. It's not automatic. Uh, just for example, this year, where are we at uh, with the EQIP program? Uh, back in October, we established a uh, application deadline. This doesn't mean that it's the only time that we can turn in an application. We accept applications year round for this program, but we do need to establish a deadline so that we can, we can process these applications in a timely manner in order to be considered for current year funds. With that same program, we're now in that screening process. We're going through the ranking. We're hoping to, uh, the end of uh, end of March, um, identify those applications that have been accepted for funding. Okay. The third program I'd like to visit with you about is the CSP or the Conservation Stewardship Program. This program is different. Um, the CSP program, we're looking at helping uh, you, the producer, with your existing conservation systems. And then in addition to evaluating your existing management, we're going to address your priority resource concerns um, that we've identified ahead of time. And also, um, we're going to earn CSP payments for conservation performance. Higher the performance, higher the payment. You know, how do we do this? How many of you have gone through the CSP program before? 
raise a hand? A few of you. All right, so if you have gone through this process, you might remember sitting in the office you know, with your NRCSP office and going through an interview, asking you a series of questions about how do you manage your cropland? What's your cropping rotation like? How do you fertilize? How do you graze? Um, those types of things. Um, looking at your, your current management, this is, where your, this is where your points, this is where the screening takes place. Okay. So this program is, is definitely different than EQIP in that regard. A uh, few things I want you to know uh, in terms of if you're interested in the CSP program, it's got a lot of different benefits that we can utilize. Uh, the first one is this is an operator-based program. Like we've seen in the prior program, EQIP was, could be an owner or an operator. CSP does need to be the operator. We're looking at the individual who's on the ground making the day-to-day -day decisions, you know, doing the planting, the tilling, the grazing, the moving the cattle, reaping the benefit for their decisions. Um, those are the individuals that we're working with. Um, they must, uh, you must have operated the land for a minimum of 12 months. We're demonstrating and rewarding you for the management you're doing, so we want to see that history. Um, must have control of the land for a minimum of five years. The CSP program is a five-year program, so definitely we're looking for control of the land for at least those five years. Um, We'll be expected to keep records of management and practices throughout the year. Okay, one of the ways that we document uh, that we are carrying out the management is is sitting down with you, looking at your grazing records, looking at your fertilizer records, and identifying how are we carrying out these enhancements. How are we are we treating these concerns? Is there ways that we can improve and get a little bit more out of that program? Um, we want to help you do that. Um, we talked about five-year contracts. Payments are made annually with this program. Maximum payment amounts are 40,000 per year. Um, and then like EQIP as well, this is a competitive screening and ranking process that we go with, go through. Okay. The last and final program uh, I want to visit with you about today is called the RCPP program. But, um, it's aimed at improving soil health, wildlife habitat, landscape productivity, provides landowners with financial assistance for incorporating regenerative farming practices, and improving wildlife habitat and, diver and diversifying your crop rotations and landscape use. So this program um, through this part of South Dakota um, is, is really focusing on the soil health and wildlife aspects. Um, it is a partnership program uh, that we're, we're carrying out. Um, the dual partnership is between NRCS and Ducks Unlimited. Um, there's two different areas of focus for this program, for Potter County, that is. Um, we're looking at the James River watershed, which covers a small portion of the eastern border of the state, or of the county, sorry. Um, and then also the Prairie Pothole Working Area. These are two different project areas, two different signups. They'll be treated differently with the same goal in mind. Um, the Prairie Pothole Working Area does cover eastern South Dakota, east of the river, uh, parts of North Dakota and Minnesota. What are some examples um, that might, might be covered in this, in this program? Um, we're going to be geared towards establishing cover crops. Um, this could include enhancing your cropland with wetland sites already present on the land. Um, looking at grazing land improvements. So this could be fence, could be pipeline, um, definitely introduced or intertwined with your grazing management plans. Grassland restoration, this could be interseeding. And then as well, wetland restoration. This isn't inclusive, but hopefully this just gives you an idea that, hey, maybe I've got some land like this, I've got some projects in mind, maybe this would be a good fit for me. If you have questions in regards to this program, uh, more about how to get involved, uh, how to carry it out, um, definitely encourage you to con get in contact with your local NRCS field office. Um, there's another, another individual, Bruce Toy, with Ducks Unlimited. Bruce here today. Yep. Would you mind standing up? Okay. So, I'll be here all day too. Definitely. Thanks, Bruce. 
we all practice. Going around for all these going around. Oh, gee, my other users are wildlife and my users as well. It's pretty exciting. You bet. Um, All right. Um, with all the programs that we identified today, um, I want to just kind of bring back some key points. Uh, we we looked at four main programs. You know, four main programs uh, that today, you know, with our discussion, that can really help you achieve these same goals, same objectives. Uh, one of the things that programs do is they help bring a little bit of money to the table to offset some of the costs for trying something new. This is something that you wouldn't normally maybe do on your own. Um, the first point I have up here is allow time for conservation planning. Um, one of the, the biggest mistakes I see people make sometimes is rushing into things and going back and saying, man, I wish I would have considered this. I wish I would have done this differently. Or why didn't I consider this idea? Um, having that open communication with your, your conservation or your NRCS field office and their partners um, can go a long ways to making sure that you have a successful plan. Um, <laughs> we're, we're addressing. <laughs> We're addressing your goals and objectives as well. Um, second point, conservation programs are a tool. So keep in mind, you know, the, the program is, is, you know, comes second. We want to make sure that we're using the best tool for the job. Um, so, and sometimes, uh, you know, this includes more than one tool. And how can we work, these, work through these together? Um, if there's an NRCS program that we can include, if we can tie it together with even another agency or another partner, even better. Looking at Fish and Wildlife Service, looking at Pheasants Forever, you know, we're always open to these kind of partnerships and getting the same common goals on the ground. Uh, select the right program. Uh, so just like the tool, uh, we want to make sure that this program is going to have the best result for with what you're trying to achieve. Um, again, you know, maybe, maybe this you know, one of our programs um, isn't necessary and we can accomplish everything we're trying to do with um, materials, projects, you know, what you already have on the ground. You know, we'd still love to help you, even through technical assistance. Maybe there's portions of your project we can prioritize and utilize a combination of, pro of programs to help achieve your goals and objectives on the ground. The third, um, conservation programs are voluntary. So, what I'm looking at there is we may not always come knocking at your door. You know, pick up the phone, call us. You know, you guys need to reach out to us if you're interested, if you got ideas. Start early in that planning process. So it's voluntary. Um, you know, we want, we're here to help. Um, and last and final, communication. Um, definitely it's important to uh, know who, who your local NRCS Field Office employees are. You know, know who the, the folks are in your neighborhood that can help. Um, start that conversation early. This is what I would like to do. You know, how, how can I help improve this? How can I make this happen? Um, communication throughout the process as things change, things you've tried, things you've done differently. Um, it's really, really critical to the success of, of any project. OK, uh, before I go, I want to make sure that I do um, highlight you know, some of the folks in our, our individual office here in, in Potter County. Um, if, uh, if you've been to the NRCS field office, we're in the service center with Farm Service Agency. Um, over on the NRCS side, if you walk in the door, we're on the left. Um, we've got two permanent full-time NRCS staff uh, working in our office currently. Um, there's myself, the district conservationist, and then we also have a soil conservationist, uh, James Beavers. James, um, we've got two other uh, excellent individuals in our office that really help us get our work done. Uh, the first one I have is Fens River partner biologist Isaac Full. Um, <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks Isaac. Um, Isaac does does cover multiple offices, so he isn't in there fi necessarily five days a week, um, but he is a great asset to our office. Um, and definitely, last but not least, is our Ultima employee, who is also the Potter County Conservation District Manager, Kimberly Schweiss. <laughs> Thank you. In the corner. Um, she, um, she's been with our office uh, you know, a long time. She knows a lot of the ins and outs and, and helps us uh, also get a lot of the work done in our office. Okay. 
uh, again, if you guys have any questions after the meeting, feel free to stop by, um, um, ask questions. Um, anybody in the office as well, there's, uh, there's also uh, several other NRCS individuals in the audience today that uh, you know, I'm sure would love to answer questions as well. Um, there's my contact information. Um, with that, do we have time for questions?